So does everyone have the confidence in their computing ability that they can write a code that does that? How many of you guys use, how many of you guys use MATLAB? Probably the only coding language you know, right? Rachel's not because she's going to use Python, right? She took my class before. So in, in MATLAB, you, you just create function files, right? You create a function file to compute RG and create another one uh, to compute SG that calls compute RG in it, right? Test them in isolation. You know, test the compute RG function first. On these three examples, I give you RG. You know if it works, right? And then, if you, and then just the next step is to, you know, basically it's a one-liner in this case, but uh, just do the matrix multiplication again in MATLAB, right? And so I don't want to test you or even ask you on an assignment when we, you, uh, at, at how good you can just pro plug things into a computer. Let the computer do things, let the computer do the computing. So your job as an engineer is to identify those angles, right? That's the, the whole problem, okay? How many of you have confidence that you can identify those angles correctly? Huh? You can identify one of them. Let's go back. Alpha is a rotation about what? Down. Beta is a rotation about east. And what's the last one? Gamma is a rotation about north. Okay. And then you know how to define the positiveness of those angles, right? Uh, by just using the right hand rule. And um, that that can be important because there may be a time when you want to uh, do like a negative rotation because right? it's more convenient to say negative 90 versus 270. But a couple other things. You, you always want to make sure that none of the coordinate axes are pointing uh, up, right? Because you, really, you can't have a, st a principal stress that's it's either in the plane of the Earth or down, right? It can't be up or out of the plane of the Earth. Okay, so because this is the hardest concept in the class and I'm too easy of a professor, I created a tool to help you. Everybody understand what angle alpha is now? I did it this morning. I did it this morning. I wanted to impress my guests. Right. So see, it can get re really complicated if you were to just, if all the angles are non-zero, right? But th the reality is, one of them is always going to be down, right? If S1 is down, remember S1 is the greatest of the three principal stresses. If it's down, what's the Anderson faulting scheme? Normal faulting, right? If S2 is down, what's the Anderson faulting scheme? Strike slip. If S3 is down, what is the Anderson faulting scheme? Reverse. Okay. So that right there is going to give you some hint at what the problems are going to be. The problems are going to say something like, in an Anderson strike-slip faulting regime, with SH max pointed at the azimuth of 40 degrees, or pointed at in the northwest direction, right? what is the stress in the geographical frame, given these principal stresses? Right? So, you know, one thing when you, if you go and you play with this tool, I mean, the first thing to do is to always just do the rotation such that, um, you know, so in a strike slip faulting regime, let me ask again, in a strike slip faulting regime, 
Which way does S2 point? Down. Right? And so the first thing you have to do is you have to do a rotation of 90 degrees. Right? So S2 is now pointing down. But then there may be some other information that tells you that SH min is pointed to the north, right? Or the northwest. So you have to do an additional rotation. And that's not the one. <laughs> right? Okay. So um, this is this widget's in HTML, so I'll just post it like I post all the other nodes. Right. Now, this is an aside of the class, but it allows me to stand up on my soapbox for a second, especially because my guests are here. Uh, how do you write interactive widgets in HTML? Huh? You got to use JavaScript. Anybody know JavaScript? Anybody know how much JavaScript it would have taken to write in that interactive widget? In pure JavaScript. Probably a few thousand lines. You think I wrote that this morning? I didn't. One of the reasons, uh, you also may be asking, you probably noticed by now that my, my slides are always in this HTML format versus uh, the PowerPoint. Why not just use PowerPoint? Do what? No, that's not a big deal. I mean, all you guys probably have PowerPoint, right? And I could easily convert it to PDF. But the whole reason for using these HTML format is so that I can create these interactive widgets to help you, okay? Because I couldn't distribute that in a format that you could view in, in PDF, certainly in PowerPoint. I'm not sure how. Um, and, you know, if I were to say write a little application in MATLAB or something for you to do it, you'd have to install a runtime engine and all this. The beautiful thing about this is that if you have a web browser, you can play with it. Right? And you all have web browsers. Right. The, uh, this is what my slides look like. This is how I create them. Rachel, what is this? It's a Jupyter Notebook. It's a Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebooks are, um, way, are uh, tools that were grown out of the Python ecosystem, you know, the Python being the programming language and the people that work on it in the open source community, uh, to intermingle um, text and pictures and hyperlinks and code. In this case, this graphic right here, you probably go, you guys probably don't know what this is, but this graphic right here was actually drawn in LaTeX. Now, that's probably a little excessive to draw that picture. It would be much easier in PowerPoint to just draw the sticks, right? But this is a LaTeX code for that, and it compiles and makes that picture right there in the notebook. And my interactive widget is not written, is not written in JavaScript. It's written in what? Python. It's written in Python. So... That's how much code it took. That's how I was able to do it this morning. I was able to write that little bit of code. And the beauty of the Jupyter Notebook is it has these interactive widgets um, sort of built in that will then, from this code, generate the JavaScript that it takes to create that thing. And then I can export this as plain HTML, post it on a web page, and you can play with it. And by the way, I didn't purchase anything Everything is free. Right? Python is free. Jupyter Notebook is free. Right? And the reason I'm sort of going through this is when you guys go out and get jobs, right? you can use these tools. You can create interactive widgets like this one with that much code to show your boss how to explore the data. Right? In this case, you know, here I'm just exploring some trends from rotations and transformations, right? But it's not that difficult to write and build these kind of applications and then, you know, you can computationally probe or computationally explore data 
and, and other things, right? So, 